In today's video, we are not going to cover your typical criminal that has never known better than a life in the underworld or was forced into criminality due to poverty. In this video, our focus is on a figure who is no stranger to the limelight, a celebrated footballer known for his moves on the pitch for clubs such as Ajax Amsterdam and Sevilla FC. However, we are not here to talk about his football career. The story that is going to be unraveled is one that involves serious allegations, legal battles, smuggling, and extreme violence. This is the story of Quincy Promes, a professional footballer by day and coke smuggler by night. Quincy Anton Promes was born on the 4th of January 1992 in West Amsterdam. As a young kid, he played for the Ajax Youth Academy until he was sent off at age 16. In 2009, he signed with FC Twente's Youth Academy, and just three years later, on the 12th of April 2012, he made his debut in the Eredivisie, the highest level of professional football in the Netherlands. As a forward or attacking midfielder, he showed great talent. To gain more experience, Quincy was sent on a loan to Go Ahead Eagles, a club that played a division lower than FC Twente. The year went great, and under coach Eric Ten Hag, Quincy had a successful season. He was brought back for another season at FC Twente and had another incredible year. That year put him in the spotlights, and soon enough, he received an interesting offer to join Spartak Moscow. In 2014, he signed a four-year deal while also being recruited for the Dutch national team. Promes' years with Spartak Moscow were marked by a series of successes. In 2017, he celebrated his first major triumph as Spartak won the Russian Premier League Championship. His individual performances did not go unnoticed either. He received the title of Footballer of the Year in Russia in 2017 and ended the 2017-18 season as the top scorer in the Russian League. His career was not all positive though. In 2018, Promes signed with Spanish club Sevilla FC for a staggering 20 million euros, only to struggle with form. However, he did not let this setback define him. In the summer of 2019, he returned to the Netherlands, signing with his childhood club Ajax. He regained his form and once again became a key player. Promes then represented the Netherlands at the UEFA Euro 2020, showcasing his talent on the grand stage. But then, he suddenly returned to Spartak at the end of February 2021. Why? On the 24th of July 2020 in Abkauda, the Netherlands, Quincy attended a family party. Quincy, who was also a rapper besides being a footballer, gave a performance with a live band. Past midnight, he got in a heated argument with a cousin of his. Quincy alleged that this cousin had stolen money from his aunt. Things remained heated and all of a sudden, Quincy came at his cousin wielding a knife. The cousin tried to retreat, walking backwards, but fell when his heel hit a sidewalk. Right as he fell down, Quincy lunged with the knife. They were separated, and Quincy left the party in a hurry. Without him knowing, Quincy's phone calls were being tapped. Calls from that night reveal very interesting details. On the 25th of July at 1.02 a.m., Quincy can be heard calling his father, Upset with the fact that his father jumped in between him and his cousin, Quincy said, no, you jumped in front of him. Quincy, I do not want you to get in trouble, his father replied. Otherwise, I would strike him fatally. You understand that, right? Quincy replied. Shortly after, his mother called him too. Everybody is gone. He is going to the AMC, she told him. The AMC is a hospital in Amsterdam. Quincy asked, where did I hit him? To which his mother replied, in his leg. Well, he had a lot of luck then, Quincy replied. Around 20 minutes later at 1.21 a.m., Quincy called his mother again, but gets his brother on the phone. You know this is light, he said. To which his brother responded, this is our right, bro. Nah, it should have been neck. Yes, it is light. Next time, he will get bullets, Quincy responded. In multiple other messages and phone calls, he seemed proud of himself, and according to his own words, he was a soldier and restored the family honor. I can hear you think, why was Quincy being tapped in the first place? Well, here is where the story takes a huge turn. Quincy was suspected of other crimes prior to this incident happening. 
He was being tapped by a special unit called TCI, Team Criminal Intelligence, a team of police officers that focus on organized criminality in the Netherlands. Now I can hear you think, organized criminality? Where does that come from? Isn't this guy a footballer? Well, I will explain it all. Stay with me. Mind you, while all this was happening, Quincy was still playing for Ajax every weekend. In the background, however, he tried to salvage things. In October 2020, he sent two of his friends to his cousins with an offer of 20,000 euros in cash. All the cousin has to do was sign a declaration in which he promised that he would revoke his police report. Voice recordings on Quincy's phone exposed that they did not, let's say, ask it nicely. A crucial detail, however, at that point in time, the cousin had not even filed a report yet. It was not until four months after the incident, on the 17th of November, that the cousin filed a police report regarding the incident. All news outlets in the country eagerly reported on it. However, Quincy remained a free man. On the 9th of December, Quincy played a Champions League game with Ajax against Atlanta Bergamo. Police reports show that police wanted to arrest Quincy for what took place at the family party, yet decided not to. A day after the Champions League game on the 10th of December, police authorities created an entire communication plan. They came up with potential questions the media were going to ask and already had their answers ready. One of the potential questions they were prepared for was, did you take into account the group matches of the Champions League? The formulated answer, yes we did, but also with the severity of the incident and the time between the event and the filing of the police report. This is interesting to note, because does this mean that since he is a football player, police waited with his arrest? Well, on the 12th of December, Quincy played yet another game. A day later, he was finally arrested. During the interrogation, he admitted that he was at the party and got into an argument with someone. Together, they walked outside the building, where he was pushed away from his cousin, got in his car and left. It was not until later that night that he heard someone got stabbed. On the 14th, Quincy was once again interrogated and said that he knew who did it, but did not want to say who it was. Fascinating is that a brother-in-law of Quincy went to the police station on the 14th and told the police that he was actually the one who did it. Upon further questioning, police told him to leave as he did not know any crucial details about the incident and could not be the suspect. After spending just two nights in jail, Quincy was released. What followed was a long silence until the end of February 2021. As a total surprise, he made a transfer from Ajax back to Spartak Moscow, the club he already played for earlier in his career. Ajax initially bought him for 16 million euros and now sold him for 8.5 million euros. Definitely not a good deal, and especially when you read the tiny letters of the contract. If Quincy were to be prosecuted, Spartak would not incur any loss or damages. In an interview, he said that all the turmoil happening in the Netherlands undoubtedly affected his decision not to stay there. However, did he anticipate on what was about to come? Did he know more than we knew at the time? Well, despite the turmoil, accusations and the fact that there was a complete file on him ready to be taken to court, Quincy joined the Dutch national squad for the European Championship. The Department of Justice shelved the file for over a month and once again seemed to think that his football career was more important than prosecuting him for what he was accused of. On the 18th of November 2021, he was looking at an attempted homicide charge. However, after hearing the phone conversations, it changed into an attempted hit. Fast forward to May 2023, the prosecutors sentenced him to one and a half years in prison as they could only prove that it was aggravated assault and nothing more than that. Quincy was not in court as he remained in Moscow. I have promised to explain why he was being tapped by the team criminal intelligence that mainly focuses on organized crime. Quincy was being tapped because, besides his altercation with his cousin, he was also suspected of being involved in the drug trade and being part of a criminal organization. Police in Amsterdam had already warned Ajax and Quincy himself two times, alerted them that he was being surrounded by the wrong kind of people. He was seen and moving with notorious criminals in the Dutch underworld and was advised not to. Well, that did not really have any effect. 
You would think that if you made millions kicking a ball, you do not necessarily need to get involved in smuggling coke, right? After being tapped for years, prosecutors finally decided to prosecute him for his involvement in two shipments. Intercepted PGP messages show that Quincy talked freely about his shipments and was heavily involved in one shipment of 650 kilos and one of 712 kilos. The first shipment, hidden in bags of salt, was successful. The second shipment was not and got partly seized in Belgium. Messages show Quincy asking when his accomplices wanted to receive his 75k buy-in fee. He also discussed where the first container in January 2020 was on the boat and in what warehouse the container needed to be emptied. Even more interestingly are the messages he sent on the 25th of February 2020. I will let you know, my previous berth was only half successful. It came in two containers, one hit and the other got seized, so my entire profit was cut in half, part of the business. In the seized container, the bricks had an image of a tiger. In the PGP messages, they are referring to the black tiger, giving further evidence for the case. This case would get the code name Porto. Quincy was heavily involved in orchestrating the shipments. Messages allegedly sent by Quincy also read, my boys are on their way to Antwerp. Let's get to work, boys. Keep me up to date. Photos were sent to him showing the door of the containers, the contents of the containers, and more. He was not some sort of bystander. He was the leader. Further investigation shows that as early as 2018, police already received tips about Quincy being fully immersed in the coke trade. He communicated with a PGP phone and allegedly invested 200,000 euros once in a transport of well-known smuggler, Piet Vortel. The hack of the PGP databases around the world had given prosecutors hard evidence in their cases against Quincy. For now, he has always remained in Russia and has not set foot in Europe and more specifically, the Netherlands. He knows he is in serious trouble and will be arrested as soon as he would leave Russia. He is officially prosecuted to serve a one and a half year sentence for what he did to his cousin. For his alleged life as a smuggler, the next court date is set for the 11th of August, 2023. His lawyer has said that Quincy will attend this court hearing despite denying all allegations. We'll have to see whether that really happens. For now, he remains in Russia focused on his football and rap career, all while trying to secure himself a Russian passport. It is unclear whether he will be granted one or not. Getting one could be of great interest for him. As always, thanks for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe and click the bell for notifications as we continue to bring you more intriguing stories from the world of crime. See you in the next one.